Hello, my friends. It's Wild Dog. Now, as you may have figured out by now, there are certain people and groups that pretty much run this place. Whether we like it or not, it's pretty much reality. Now, rarely, I know, can we get just a simple good news, right? Or uplifting explanation for anything, any topic, a building, any kind of race of people or anything in antiquity. There was always a war and everyone killing each other. It's a temple. They, you know, they sacrificed the demons. It's just no one ever lived in, in peace with each other. But yet, this is America, these buildings. And bear with me, I'm going to propose something. All over the world, the same buildings, but here in America, we have 50 states. Each state has a capital building, each one grander than the next. Tartarian, big, beautiful, gigantic buildings. Well, they're all over the world. Same architecture, the same architect, right? Same interior, same, same building style, same stone, same everything, right? Now we have pictures of these, they're very old. Some of them before cameras, where they, where they painted it. Yeah, they're mud flooded, everything, right? Well, I started looking for the common denominator. I looked for that, that one person, but I couldn't find a person. So the buildings, okay, I know they're all over the world, that's common, right? So that was united together. Well, you have to have be some sort of united if everyone had the same building and everyone thought it was beautiful and the way the earth was set up. <clears throat> Thanks to Google, we can't look at too much anymore. They're kind of fuzzing a lot of stuff out. And, but we see where they were basically in the middle of the ocean. There used to be a, 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 actually, in fact, a place there, right? Well, anyone that with eyes could see, right? So I took out certain things, say I followed the money first, and you know, it led to the same people, the Rothschilds, the, you know, the, the same ones, Soros and Gates and all that, of course, yes, they want to take over the world, but those are idiots, those are just one person, money, you know, that's the front guy, and they don't mind, but, so I took out the the, the front guys, I took the money away, the buildings away, and it's okay, that's everywhere, and and who is always popping up, right? Now, I'm not going to 33 your eyes out, okay? I promise I won't mason you to death or nothing. But I found this Matthew Cook manuscript from the 1450s, right? And I was just reading along because it's mason. You know, I said, okay, what was it? And they said, oh, well, um, actually, um, Jabal was Cain's master mason and the governor of all his works when he made the city of Enoch. Of course, he... It was the first city. That was the first city that ever was made. Yep. And so Cain uh, gave it to his own son, Enoch, and then they called the city Enoch. Now it's called Ephraim. And you go on down, it says, You shall understand that the son of Tubal Cain was the founder of the blacksmiths. So as I'm reading along and, you know, trying to just get some information on these guys that always pop up, right? I start noticing Adam, Eve, Cain, um, Noah, Moses, Jesus, God, the Most High. I just, everything was just popping out. And I was like, what in the world's going on right here, right? And so, if you've ever read the Lamech of Cain, Lamech and the Levi Leviathan, that's a really good read. It'll kind of explain this, the, the city of Enoch. But back to America, we were founded by Masons. Proud, they tell you, it's it's on everything. We have the all-seeing eye, our money, just everything, right? Well, it seems like it was all over the world. So, so why? Was it world domination, right? Is it some kind of reset, extermination of someone, right? How does that work, right? Well, I kept denying what I was reading, but then I see where they start talking about the Tower of Babel and Nimrod and how Nimrod at the beginning of the kingdom was that of the true kingdom of Babylon. I mean, they're so proud of it, right? And this is crazy. It says, Nimrod taught his workmen, 40,000 of them, a measure. It says, he loved and cherished them well. 
oh, ain't that sweet? <laughs> Satan loves you. And as I'm reading through here, and I'm not going to bore you and read the whole thing, but Euclid comes up. And so then I start realizing how the Masons are saying how there's, there's one giant at one point in time, and they actually said before the flood, there was a giant, you know, continent. So I'm thinking, okay, yeah, you know, you're going to bust out with the Pangea and the whole, you know, um, continental drift and all that kind of mess, right? No, actually, it says, check this out, Euclid, for in this time that was water in the land of Egypt that is called the Nile, and it flows so far into the land that men might not dwell therein. So I was like, well, what's this deal with this entire big, you know, big, big island or big whatever? But apparently you can walk from, you know, uh, North America all the way to, to Egypt, right? And, well, from North America to Egypt, guess what you see? These buildings. So these people didn't get along, right? Um, I even typed in tubal cane, right? And I put two balls in a cane and... It, the Masons, their pen, their flag. You can even go to Amazon. Look at that. 849, Tubal Cane, Masonic badge. You too can have a satanic pen, right? So I start checking. Sorry. I start checking into Atlantis. And I say to myself, now we have giants and, and, and titans and bears. Oh my, right? But right, bear with me. So then I start reading where they try to say, well, Atlantis wasn't real. But Aristotle, you know, said Plato's just crazy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, hold on a second. That was your teacher. And you just, you know, that's pretty weaselly of him, right? But he did. And we see all these maps, right? Now, these maps show almost like a full big place in the center, right? Well, they explain how there's a landmass in the center surrounded by an ocean with land at the other side where no, nobody goes. Well, on those maps, it shows dinosaurs and what have you. And we're like, oh, no, you're crazy. You're crazy. You know, those maps didn't go nowhere. Well, then I see this. It says, and there's a hall of records under the Sphinx, you know, in Egypt. So what in the world does Egypt, the Sphinx, the, the pyramids, the, you know, Atlantis, America, Pangea, right? This one big kind, what does all have to do with anything? So you keep on reading once you get on to Atlantis and you see where they have no idea where it's at, right? But what they end up saying is Earth is surrounded by the ocean and the ocean is surrounded by more remote Earth. Now that's uh, Timaeus, the philosopher. Well, were these men philosophers or were they absolutely insane, right? So I keep reading and I'm, I'm down in this rabbit hole and I find this book. Ancient Mystic Oriental Masonry. And so, okay, you know, let's not take it for truth and take it for what it is, right? But, you know, it's not like them in 1907 to, number one, publish anything like this, but <clears throat> number two, to write or be allowed to write or publish something at that time when they could have stopped it, anything that would be some BS, right? So as I'm flipping through this book, I start noticing it came to pass when the temple was completed that Solomon hesitated to dedicate it for two reasons. And I thought, well, why is Noah and God and Solomon and all these, <clears throat> these people on these men's tongues like this in these books? Um, the people who say they have the knowledge of the heavens, right? So I flipped it to you know, page 24. And that's when I kind of got a little bit shocked at what I read. Or 25 error. It says, The ancient and mystic oriental rite is universal. And it is open to every master mason who believes in the fatherhood of God and the universal brotherhood of all men. Sounds like some good dudes, right? The other qualification necessary of the neophyte is that he shall be honorable and upright in his dealings. Choke on it, bro. I mean, are you kidding me? Right. I mean, don't buy that whatsoever, but pull the truth out of it now. Hold on. They're not going to lie to each other. The cradle of the symbolism used in all masonry is placed by many of the best authorities in that country, which they believed was first inhabited, i.e. the plateau of Tartary. All right, everybody listen now. And from there, transmitted to this generation by the sages of India, Persia, Ethiopia, and Egypt. 
we are not indebted to either ancient Egypt for either religion or masonry, but to America. It is a fact that at, that at Memphis, Egypt, in the pyramids, under the guidance of the kings, the mystic rites of masonry from Nimrod, right, remember, were, wor were worked many thousands of years ago. But at that time, Egypt and the continent of America were one and the same. I'm telling you, it was one big, huge continent. It says, in America, rediscovered in the 15th century and repopulated in the 17th century. Well, there you go, mud floaters, everybody, right here. It says, was recovered Egypt and the promised land or the land of the constellation of the eagle. Seriously, no matter how numerous or complicated the works of a lock may be, if but the right key be applied. That's what I'm talking about, right? If, if I don't believe anything in this book, that was a good one right there. It says, um, the Great Pyramid proves to be the long-sought key to the mysteries at once of mythology and of the great world religions. Okay, it says here, check this. 1907, especially interesting is it to Americans in this year of the Columbian celebration of the 400th anniversary of the rediscovery of America to see it uh, demonstrated that the cosmic terrors interwoven with the very warp and woof of all of sacred literature, Christian and pagan refer to the occurrences as literally true as the earthquake of Lisbon, meaning that, look, this is everything we have says it happened. Those stupendous events being connected primarily with a great destruction and recovery of equilibrium in the solar system. Remember, they worship the sun. And secondly, with the consequent wrecking of the continent of America when the globe became involved in the consequences of the disorder of the skies. That sounds creepy, right? America, known to the mystic as Atlantis, when this ruin befell, was the seat of the greatest empire that has ever existed, and its irresistible armies were terrorizing all Europe and Asia. We do that today, right? Um, America, world police, right? Jeez, <laughs> we're coming to free the shit out of you. It says, study of the American constellation, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, reveals the immemorial antiquity of the name of America. Really? And the significance of the arms of the United States. The fact, once recognized, that it is impossible to separate the eagle from America, the land shadowed with wings of Isaiah. Got to be kidding me, people. Over which accordingly appear two grand eagles. See, so... You can see why I filled my pockets, right? Okay, so bear with me. Let's see, we'll move down. It says at the bottom, look, it says, It will appear that while all is sublime in the historic past centers upon Egypt, all that is sublime in the prehistoric past centers upon America, Atlantis. Right? <sighs> wow. And see, the peoples of ancient Egypt and America, is, they're one and the same, it says. <clears throat> People of the eagle on this continent, the two are one, and that prehistoric America was the original Egypt, or eagle land, prior to the mighty dispensation in the days of Peleg, I don't know, dear, uh, when the earth was divided and the great globe itself was nearly rent asunder. See? During the flood, right? Mm -mm -mm. First among the continents, America has been falsely, was that, denominated the New World? Hmm. So they didn't get their little, you know, woohoo, they need, but apparently these guys here, you know, they know the secrets to the heavens, right? You know, they, they're constantly playing Dungeons and Dragons with each other, but, you know, so it's hard for me to tell you what's truth and what's not, but this is very interesting, right? Okay, one second, let's, uh, let me flip the page here. It says, um, others judging from the similarity of some religious rites have conjectured that it was peopled by the ten tribes at the dispersion of Israel. See, the, the, the ten tribes went to Asia, and then that's where we were saying it's, you know, that was Tartaria, right? But it says, some think it received its population from China or Japan. Others that it was um, colonized by some wandering tribes of Japheth. Well, that's just very weird, right? So... I won't read the whole thing to you. Um, if you go to this archive, all you really have to do is type this in. They'll let you see it. It's even in the Library of Congress for some 
strange region. Here, 13, it says, 13 there, it says, The people who erected the obelisks in Egypt and covered them with hieroglyphs, who wrapped mummies embalming them with the greatest care, knew no more about the pyramid builders than we do today. Oh, imagine that, right? Those majestic, voiceless sentinels, the pyramids, with heads uncovered and lifted heavenward, stood there on the broad plain, silent and dumb, with no one to explain their origin when Egyptian civilization, civilization began. How many of us already knew that? With all the laser cut stone and all that, you know, we already know this, right? But here they tell you, you know, like I said, I don't know if this is truth, but this, this the next page uh, says that no one knew why the pyramids were built is a wrong conclusion for we of the mystic, well, of course they know, right? Masonry know that they were built for no other purpose than for Satan. No, for supreme initiation. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, these people are crazy. I, I don't know. For it must be remembered that there have been two religions. Oh, here we go. Founded on one principle. The one for the priest and the other. You know, how true is that, right? Um, the shape of the pyramid is the deepest meaning. Okay, this is for their initiates, right? Um, see, the Egyptian pyramids excite us uh, sublime. See, not only on account of their special vastness, but also of their great age. We feel ourselves dwarfed to the insignificance in their presence, and yet reveal in the pleasure of contemplating them. That's right. Nobody has no idea. Right? Oh, that was a tomb. No, no, it wasn't. It was there. Um, it says, uh, For who will believe that those who at incalculable cost set in action the human powers of many thousands for many years in order to construct the pyramids? That's right. Isn't that crazy? It's so crazy, right? But, I, I mean, I know it was far-fetched sounding, right? But, see, the Atlanteans supposedly built the pyramids, right? And... The manuscript and the book and, and you know, Plato and all these people, they, they said that the pyramids were the center of the earth, okay? The center of that landmass, right? But no one knows for what reason they put them there or what they did. <clears throat> um, and basically, they resided in what is now everywhere is what I'm saying, right? Uh the whole place was Atlantis. We, it was, it was a great place to be, right? Now, what do we do with this, right? It's so unbelievable, so, so out there. No way can this be, right? Well, unfortunately, I've learned that usually crazy is the way, right? And I don't know if it's a joke or, or what, but they're all in the same club and. And they know the secrets. They show you the little you know, hidden hands. They do their little, you know, see no evil, hear no evil thing, and speak no evil, and hush, hush, don't say nothing. Well, USA, Russia, everyone, they're all buddies, all friends. They just get us to fight each other, that's all. Right? And uh, the reason why our past is so insane and with full of wars and evil men and killing and stealing and pillaging and, and <clears throat> death and destruction is because that's all they can make up okay it's like a child trying to explain to you just just some lie you know, they'll just go so far with it that, you know if, if no one stops them you know the dragons did it and they burnt the house down like the corsican brothers right it, it, it'll get out of hand and no one stopped him and said, excuse me, you know, um, who are you and why are you blocking off part of my earth for, right? Uh, why can't I go past 60 degrees that way and 60 this way without some kind of special, you know, pass or a super secret agent badge, right? And what's the deal with you guys you know, playing with the Pope, you know, in Antarctica doing God knows what, right? And what all kind of points back to one thing is, were those people crazy that made those maps a long time ago? Did they leave port in a ship that took 20 years to build? You know, did they just leave with, with a map that, a map to nowhere, right? Um, or, or, or what is it, right? Now I know the answer to it, but 
I just don't want to tell people that, oh, this is the truth. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But I say this. <sighs> Take it with a grain of salt. Check it out. We're always looking for a reason. What happened? Tartaria, Mudblood, the Phoenix, this eagle. You know, something's going on. Everyone has their own opinion. But maybe we need to start looking right under our feet. What if the whole place was Atlantis? The whole place was, was hooked to Tartaria. The whole place was magnificent. We see it. We see the pictures it used to be. We didn't always kill each other, y'all. <laughs> it's only these clowns, these, these old men I found in this rabbit hole. That's, that's who's playing, that's the stage. So I didn't find any, <laughs> I didn't find any henchmen or nothing, just a bunch of those sad old men playing D&D with their friends, basically. <laughs> But, hey, don't you worry your heart, right? I always say, you know, let truth be sweet to your lips and turn your stomach because it's so strong. Man, I love you all. This is Wild Dog. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm out of here. See you later. Bye.